actually going to move on to the last segment of our time together, which is elevator speeches. So, um, there are some keys to crafting your elevator speech, right? This is a conversational hook. This is 30 seconds in an elevator. That's why it's called an elevator speech. This is um, walking through a poster session and chatting with someone new or an old colleague. Um, this is an opportunity for you to further distill your message box, um, to pick just a few details to get your audience interested, um, and then to open the door for a longer conversation. And so, you know, the one of the points here, as with a lot of what we've just worked on, is to engage your audience, to not have them glaze over, to not have them say, oh, that's great, I'll see you later. Right. I've definitely experienced that at a, a few uh, poster sessions or so. Um, so uh, before we actually take some time to do elevator speeches ourselves, we're gonna, um, I'm gonna show a couple of examples. This isn't exactly what we're gonna do here, um, but we show these because they really help illustrate the challenge of condensing down what you do to 30 seconds or so. How do you feel about describing your science in 30 seconds? I'm going to make the attempt. Imagine that you had a yardstick, you cut it into tentacle pieces and throw a nine, and you go from something this big to that big. Take that remaining thing, cut it into tentacle pieces, throw away nine, keep one. You go from a yardstick to the size of my fingernail. If you do this process 10 times, you get to the size of the atom. Suppose you did that, say, 35 times. What's left in our universe? Well, we have no instruments to measure that. And so people like me have been working on a piece of mathematics called string theory and super string theory to answer that question. We think there are filaments there. I try. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. So, all right. So what did he do well? Yeah. He, he had a great analogy for what for his work. I'm like, oh, that's string theory, right? Yeah. Any other thoughts, reactions? He's likable. Yeah. I was going to say that he was really interested in his topic. Like, he wasn't monotone. He had, like, inflection in his voice. Totally. He was clearly very passionate about his work. Absolutely, but that's what he didn't do, yeah. right? Like he didn't contextualize the why this matters. There wasn't really a so what there. There was a, a kind of implicit, uh, you know, assumption that we all care about <laughs> the this piece of the universe. Yeah, Ben. Um, and I really like his analogy, but I think he spent too much time on the analogy mm -hmm. and got to the very end and said, "And we think there are filaments there." Like, wait, <laughs> wait, what? Also, what's a filament? <laughs> Right? Yeah. So, I mean, but there's great passion, you know, great analogy. He's animated, um, but clearly something, like you want to ask him more questions, so it's opening that door, but probably a little room for improvement. Awesome. Uh, yeah, right? Okay. All right. And so it's probably a familiar face, uh, Catherine Hayhoe, but this is many years ago, right? So this is her and her um, kind of early... Uh, career as a uh, great science communicator. I study what climate change means for us in the places where we live. Whether we live on the eroded coastline up in Alaska, whether you're a farmer in the Central Valley of California, or in the heart of the Great Plains, I figure out what climate change means for us. And what we see is two important things. <laughs> I study what climate change means to us in the places where we live. How does it matter to us? What's already affecting us today? And what does climate change mean in the future? What we see are 
two important things. First of all, the climate is already changing. And second of all, the magnitude of future changes depends on the choices that we make now and in the next decade. Is that 30 seconds? <laughs> all right, so what did y'all think of that one? I mean, I think that the uh, big thing is, right, it's really challenging for even a really, like, well, well-trained science communicator to get both get some background <laughs> and the point and their work into 30 seconds, right? So you have to pick and choose. And the, again, if this is a conversational hook. This is a question, right? This is, this is laying the groundwork for that, for that dialogue. Um, the other thing that I love about both of these together is the different personalities, right? Like, you know, uh, just the way that they are both, you know, very passionate, but uh, just they let their personalities and authenticities shine through. Um, so now it is your turn. So take a couple of minutes and jot down some notes about what you do, why it matters, and why you love it. And then we'll practice elevator speeches. 